Hey, fun people. Welcome to Everything Aja. And if you're new here, hello, 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 hello. I am Aja. I am an educational consultant who helps parents and homeschool moms and dads out there prevent burnout in literacy by making reading as fun, simple, and systematic as possible. And here on Saturdays, we call this our Chat It Up Saturday. We did a poll. We have a name. Woo -woo. And on Saturday mornings, we like to just come talk, chat about the things that you don't get to chat about everywhere else out there in this world. And on today, we are talking about, is the Marva Collins approach outdated? The last two Saturdays, or the last three Saturdays, have definitely given us a whirlwind of wonderful topics and conversations to chat about. And Marva Collins' name has come up time and time again. I told y'all I was going to do my research. I am so glad that you guys brought her up. Not only have I been inspired, but you were inspired as well. So I had to dedicate this Saturday to talking about is her approach outdated um, and let's chat about it. Let's talk about it. She was such a um, phenomenal and life changing educator. So let me know down in the comments. Do you know who Marvel Collins is? If not, we are about to catch you all up so that you aren't missing a thing. And then we're going to look specifically at her approach to phonics, since we are always talking about how to teach reading without feeling overwhelmed or burned out, we are going to really look at her approach to phonics and then talk about it and chat about it. Is it outdated? Is it something that should be in these schools today? Or is it something that is a thing of the past? So I'm ready. You're ready. Go ahead in the chat box. Let me know where you guys are from. I love finding out where everybody's from. Everybody knows that I am from Atlanta, Georgia. Woo -woo. That's my A. That's my A for, for all of you guys out there. <laughs> that is my A for a town. So let's just chat about who um, Marva Collins is. And one of my favorite quotes, um, I have a lot of quotes because she, y'all, she was so intelligent. I, I, I feel some type of way that I did not know about her before. So I thank y'all for like gearing this conversation. And um, she her quotes were just absolutely phenomenal. So I want to start off with one of her co quotes. If you don't give anything, don't expect anything. Success is not coming to you. You must come to it. So that was definitely inspirational. Um, and she taught children just how to do this. So all these quotes that I'm including um, today are her quotes, um, that things that she actually stated and believed to her children. You said, glad you're able to watch it. Woo -woo. You're originally from St. St. Louis. Okay. Um, but you've been in Dallas, Texas for 31 years. Dallas is so beautiful. Let me say, let me tell you, Dallas is so beautiful. Um, we're actually going back in October. So I'll be there in October. Family trip, family trip. My, um, Godparents live there, and so does my one of my other cousins. So, so beautiful. Um, good morning, good morning, good morning, Bonnie, Alabama. Woo, woo, dirty South, like me. <laughs> so, thank you. And as y'all come in, definitely drop down where you guys are from. All right, so who is Marva Collins? And you guys can certainly drop any additional information in the chat box. I'm just giving an, an overview. I am so glad that now, look, I've, I'm woke, you know, <laughs> um, but you can definitely add um, things down below in the chat box as well. But Marva Collins was born in Alabama. She did graduate from Clark College, best known as Clark Atlanta University years later. And she graduated um, as being a secretary. In fact, that was her first job. She became a secretary. In fact, she did not go directly into teaching, but she did teaching right after that. Um, and then she moved to Chicago and she was teaching and the, she did not like the way that education was going. She did not like the way that students were treated um, she did not like the politics and she just didn't like all that. So many of the things that we complain about on here that I feel like um, the last few Saturdays we've talked about, you know, districts and um, the pressure and the teaching shortage and the burnout and all this other stuff that we have no control about. She felt the same way. And this was back in the 70s. So it really kind of showed me like, OK, not much has changed in these last, you know, 
50 years, we're still dealing with the same pressure, the same buildup, the same overwhelm that even she dealt with. Uh, good morning, good morning, morning, South Carolina. Woo, we got a lot of, we got a lot of dirty South <laughs> here. Um, so greetings, greetings, greetings. So she dealt with a lot of that same pressure and she decided to do something about it. Not only did she just quit her teaching job, but she quit, took out money out of her pension and started her own school called the West Side Preparatory School. She opened it in 1975 in Chicago. So um, that's like the buildup of her career. So once she started teaching and had her own school, um, she was able to really implement in her own curriculum. She was able to start a curriculum designated for students and boys and girls that looked like her. Um, and a lot of her beliefs align with so many of my beliefs. So it was definitely like eye breaking. I definitely have a new role model now. So shout out to you <laughs> for that, uh, for bringing her up. Um, but when she started her own school, she, be, oh, let me do it like this. Um, she began to implement not only her own curriculum, but also building children. In fact, she actually said that building children is just as important as the actual curriculum in and of itself, that they are one and the same. You cannot educate a child with out building the child's mental um, stability as well. In fact, she was huge on not only educating children, but empowering children. She was huge on making children um, love learning, getting them to not only love learning, but love literature. You guys, I, have, oh, I had to put that in there. And a lot of you guys that are in my Teaching My Design program, you know that I always talk about getting children to fall in love with learning because if a child falls in love with learning, there is nothing a teacher can do to, or a student or environment can do to take or strip that away, away from a student. So getting children to fall in love with learning and literature, I was like, oh my goodness. Like we have a lot of our um, morals and education completely aligned. You say, you're welcome. Yes, you are the bomb.com for this topic. I was, I was so inspired. Um, I watched, it was like, she has like a few, two, like one documentary, one Lifetime, um, they did a movie about her. And then there's so many just articles about her entire life. And so it was very, very inspirational. And she also taught, taught teaches children critical thinking skills, getting them to actually think on their own. And she um, did an interview and she was talking about how most most teachers in education want children to teach a certain way. And when children aren't in that box, then they label them or they throw them out or the child is no good instead of meeting children where they are and building them up as a person in addition to teaching them the curriculum. Um, love you, love you, love you too. Uh, and she it talked about that. It's like they're both important, building a child up um, who they are and what they know simultaneously. Um, and so that's a little bit about her philosophy and how she viewed education um, in and as a whole. And one, one more quote she said is, success doesn't just come to you, you go to it. Very similar to that first quote. She said this about success over and over and over again. It actually became one of her signature quotes. And she taught children how to, how to do this, how to go after what it is that they want to do and what it is that they believed. And that goes hand in hand with the critical thinking skills and everything else that she was in, uh, um, um, empowering and putting it into children. Um, and so that's just a little bit about her upbringing and her, um, her, her belief. She had a very different belief to education and um, it's not so different. I know y'all let me know down before we talk into her phonics approach. Let me know down below in the chat box. Um, does this correlate with your core beliefs? I know there are so many different philosophies to education and there's so many different beliefs. Um, I know I believe that every child can we learn that every child can um, can and will learn. It just takes a special person to really just meet who they are. And I know I share this story a lot. I really woke up teaching at my first Title I school. I had I was teaching fifth grade, my first year of fifth grade, and I had a baby reading on a kindergarten reading level. I actually had two on a kindergarten reading level and then an entire reading group on first grade reading level. It was, it was crazy, crazy. But um, one of the kids had been held back three years. In fact, he was, he was 
was at the maximum. He could not fail anymore. And he knew that he could not fail anymore. And um, I never forget, the, as soon as I had uh, all the teachers, I'm, y'all let me know if y'all ever been in a situation. They all come to your classroom wanting to tell you about your new student. It was, oh, girl, last year he stole a car from his previous teacher. He stole his teacher's car. They had to call the police and all this crazy stuff that he had done before. And I was like, okay, but we're going, we're going, uh, this is a new year, new year. And um, I knew immediately that I had to build a relationship with him. Um, I know with Marva Collins, she was really big on building the building the children up for society and getting them to think on their own. For me, I'm really huge on building relationships, but it goes kind of really similar hand to hand. That's why I asked, you know, what is it that y'all believe um, with education? But I'm huge on building relationships because I've seen it even in my own classroom in a society where those children say exactly, we're told that they cannot succeed, that they could, couldn't do it. They heard that they couldn't do it more than people that said that they could do it. And I wanted to be that beacon of light, that hope that would that encourages that encourages them, and the same as you know, the same as Marva Collins. But I never um, forget this particular child, and I knew I had to really um, build the relationship with him. And I told him, once I realized Baby Boy just could not read, I told him one on one, not in front of people now, one on one, like do you, do you do you want to be able to read? And he was joking at first. I said, stop joking, stop stop all of that. We're not on the comedy show there's nobody in here watching you do you want to learn how to read and he was like I mean yeah <laughs> because every time it was time to read he was cracking jokes I mean the boy probably now um I would not be surprised if he was a comedian now because he was funny and he had he had a talent of doing like different impressions and so I said do you want to learn how to read and he said yes and so I said okay cool if you stop Stop doing all that. <laughs> like, stop, you know, showing out and you sit in class and pay attention. I said, I will teach you how to read. I will not only teach you how to read, but I will I will try to my all that I can to catch you up. Um, because right now you are I think it was like 13 in the fifth grade. Um, and I was like, I might not be able to catch you all the way up to there, but I will at least try to catch you up to a fifth grade reading level. Mind you, he was in kindergarten reading level, but he's in fifth grade and he's really 13. So it was I had I actually had two students that were the same, the same, but he had the behavior um issues as well because he was showing out to cover cover it up so that none of the other kids would notice his deficit. Um, and I started to build the relationships. I started doing lunch and learns with him when nobody else was in the room, and I started started doing that. And it's, it reminded me when I when I was listening to Marva Collins and she was talking about how she did the same thing and she would have kids stay after school. And she said eventually it became where the whole school wanted to stay after school and everybody wanted to stay late. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's what. I up happening with my lunch and learns it became like the whole class wanted to come back and learn some more and I'm like y'all don't want a break from learning and so I could identify with her story so well I could identify with the philosophy of you have not Educating children is huge, but we also have to do more to build them up as a person. Because if you want to try to um, just put in the chat box, what is it? Everybody has a favorite teacher. Um, everybody, I feel like all of us have that teacher that actually changed or shaped us to be who we are today. Do you have that teacher? Go ahead and shout out that teacher down below in the chat box who they are, their names. For me, I actually had two. Mine was Mrs. Welch. I had her sixth through eighth grade. And then I had Mr. Devers. And both of them shaped who I am today. In fact, I would not be here right now talking to you if it wasn't for them. And then I want you to not only shout out their name in the chat box, but I want you to also think, what is it that they did to become your favorite teacher? Was it their teaching techniques? Because I can guarantee you they had nothing to do with education, um, nothing to do around it with education. I know for me, Miss Welch taught me how to literally come out of my shell. I was really shy, very timid, and she saw something in me, probably the same thing y'all see in me here on YouTube. Um, and she made me come out of my shell. I mean, made me, made me literally stand in front of the class because I got her in sixth grade as a theater teacher. And I was brand new from, I went from Indiana, which was an all African-American environment at my school. And then I went to Tennessee where the schools were segregated. Yes, yes, I went to a segregated school. 
Yes, I did. Um, and this was well after, you know, the integration laws. And so the, the, the classroom was integrated, but everything else was not. We had separate, um, separate cafeterias, separate PE classes, separate buses, separate everything except our primary teacher. And so I was in culture shock. And then I came there to Georgia. And by the time I came to Georgia, I was just like, I'm just done. I just don't want to talk to anybody. And she saw something in me and she forced me to like stand in front of the class and talk and recite Shakespeare all the time. Really similar to how Marva Collins was teaching her children Shakespeare and stuff. And she made that personality pop out of me. Um, like she forced me to get out of my comfort level and she challenged me and she kept encouraging me, you can do this. And she was really crazy, y'all. <laughs> she had an invisible six foot um, bunny rabbit named Harvey. Her her sharp pencil sharpener's name was Oscar. She would growl at kids that were bad. She would put curses on kids with her, her wand, like literally curses on kids. It was crazy. I would come home and tell my mom these stories and my mom was like, what? in the world <laughs> what in the world what are you going through and but i loved her and she forced me to get into drama and i love drama and then i was in theater and then by the time i got to um col my high college high school i found my second favorite teacher which was mr devers and he almost like picked up right where he, she left and he was not only my theater teacher but he was homeroom um and so he taught me he was really big on manners and um both of them were older um, white teachers, very old, born, raised in the South. You knew that their parents had slaves and stuff. Like they made it very known, but um, but they 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 both saw something in me and they pushed it out of me. And it had nothing to do with education. It had nothing to do with learning. It had nothing to do with any of that. Um, and if you ever ask some of your students that say you're my favorite teacher and they come back year after year, I know I just I just saw farewell. Um, gave one of my students um. Uh, to college and I'm like okay what is it that tied them to you why is it that you became their favorite teacher I guarantee you it has nothing to do with education um, in and of its whole so that's the one thing I am huge about is building relationships and so to look at Marva Collins and her story about really building children up um, for society and how building them as a person is just as important as the curriculum that really resonated with me all right, in the chat box, um, you say you saw this movie when you were around seven or eight. Okay, so you've always been inspired. You say you always wanted to make a positive difference in people's lives. Oh my goodness, um, you're a Head Start teacher presently, presently, um, and you are always rooting for the underdog. Woo woo! I love that. I love that. I love that. Um, and she's such a great mo role model. So I am so glad you have added her to my list. My list. Okay, we have a shout out for a favorite teacher, Mrs. Johnson. A a, um English eighth grade why is it that 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 was your like why was that become why did Mrs. Johnson become your favorite teacher I just want you to think about it or I me mean, you could drop it in the chat box if you want but what is it that Mrs. Johnson did that made you love her you said Mrs. Keller 11th grade English teacher woo woo um Mr. Nixon's guidance uh, consultant 10th grade now I have a lot of people love their guidance counselors a lot of them love their guidance counselors why because I feel like with guidance counselors they were able to meet you in um outside of the box like I said it has nothing to do with education education is great but what resonates with us a lot of times is the other stuff it's the it's that relationship is that connection I love it um you said uh, Mrs. Hill, sixth grade, St. Louis. Whoop, whoop. Um, um, she did not play. <laughs> she did not play, but she signed you up for this program. Oh, the Quest Club, and it changed your life. That's what I'm talking about. And um, I don't know why I was about to cry right there. Oh my goodness. Um, just talking about teachers and how the impact they have on you. I know, like I was just sharing y'all on here, Miss Watch, I have looked for her for years years I've looked at her I'm on Facebook I do not have her first name and that's what, what's harboring me my other teacher Mr. Devers I never got to really come back and tell him thank you and then he passed away and I wasn't able to go to his funeral um and so it was it weighed on me and I've always wanted to go back and tell her but I just I haven't like I've, I've had kids that came back and I feel like teachers deserve to hear that exact comment that changed my life um and it's just so powerful I think we we take it for granted how um how much we can really shape another person's life like we really have the ability to 
touch people in a way that can make them become teachers or, you know, that can really inspire them for generations to come. So it's beautiful. Let me get out my soapbox because y'all going to have me on here crying. I ain't got time. And I used to never be emotional, y'all. I used to really not be emotional. He said she had the looks and she read good. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my hey, that's what attracted you to her. Then that's what attracted you to her. Oh, and she took the time out. Now that's another big thing. Taking your time out when teachers don't feel like it's an inconvenience, they're willing to go above and beyond for us. All right. Thank you guys for sharing. Let me stop getting out my emotions. Y'all didn't y'all didn't wake up on Saturday morning to watch me cry, but it's so beautiful that um and thank y'all for sharing, you know, your favorite teacher. And if you're watching the replay, definitely drop that down below who your favorite teacher is and um, how they were able to shape you. Because um, there's something about the power of shaping a child, shaping the future. Um, and it, it doesn't take a lot. It just takes somebody to care, that somebody to care. So if you're definitely like, I want to be that person, send an emoji down below. Like, let's, let's join as a community and become, um, become those pillars of light and education. I know we got on here, we get on here and we vent a lot, but there's still a lot of room for light. There's still a lot of room for light. And if anything, Marva Collins does, even in today's time, is she um, inspires us that we could still be that light. We could still be the beacon of light in education. All right. So speaking of Marva Collins, let's jump into her phonics program. Let me know before we jump into her phonics program, which phonics programs do you use? Or if any, maybe you don't have a phonics program that you necessarily use. Maybe you have something you used in the past. Um, or so like what, what phonics program do you use? And the one great thing about Marva Collins and her teaching and how she was able to um, change the lives of so many children, even academically, was the way she taught children how to read. She used a phonics approach to reading and um, we're, I'm going to share a little bit of details about her phonics approach but she really taught African American children and the class was huge it was a whole bunch of kids, kids in them but she taught them how to read by giving them very specific and explicit lessons. In fact, um, every time she taught them how to read a word, she took them through a series of, I mean, a series of steps where the first thing they did was look at the vowel and identify the key vowel in a word that when you see a word, the first thing I need you to do is identify the key vowel and say the sound of that vowel and then put that vowel in the context of the consonants around it until you know the word. So for example, her children would say the saying, the vowel is blank and the word is blank. So you would say things like the vowel is at and the word is cat. The vowel is at and the word is bat. And so they would identify the key vowel in a word and then put the, that vowel with the consonants and sound out the word. So um, that was how she really taught them how to identify new words within her phonics approach. The next thing she had within the way she taught teaching was syllabication. And y'all, I am so excited. I have, make sure y'all are subscribed below because we have some videos coming up all about syllable division. I am huge on syllable division. So I'm excited to really share that with you guys, but she was big on syllabication. And basically what you do with that is you breaking up words into syllables. Um, so any word you can break into a syllable um, and how many syllables that word has. Um, and she taught children how to do that, how to break up words um, and how the, you know, the blends technically are one syllable. And, you know, she, she did all of that. Um, she also taught children how words look and how to write them. Um, not not by memorizing words, she wasn't big on sight words, but how do words look? And if you know how the word looks, then you're able to then write it. If you know how to spell the word, you're able to then write it. So she really tied in the reading with writing, but she taught the reading and the phonics first. And then um, because she knew if you could if you could sound out and hear a word, like if you knew that um, the vowel is ad and the word is cat, then you know that the letters is k 
I mean, the sound is C, the A is A, and the T is T, then she knows that you should be able to write the word cat because you can spell and sound out the word cat. And so she said there was a connection there. And so if you knew how the word looked, if you knew it looked for the C and the A and T, then you know how to write that word. Um, and so she did not teach writing explicitly, but more of a connection between the reading and the writing. And don't forget, let me know down below in the chat box what phonics pro what phonics programs you, you guys use. Um, she also taught the sound, the sound. So not only you guys know how we teach in primary grades, we'll start off or head start, you know, we'll start off by teaching children the alphabet and we teach them, you know, their ABCs. And um, I know when I was in college, oh, I love my, I love um, one of my college professors, uh, Miss Thomas, she, she wrote my letter of recommendation. She was AKA and wrote my letter of recommendation for Delta, super crazy, but she did. Um, but she was amazing and she taught us, um, she was, she taught, she was my educator for all my reading classes of how to teach children how to read. Um, and one thing she had us do was say the alphabet based on sounds. Um, and we didn't do it like Marva Collins did, but we did learn the alphabet strictly based on sounds. So you don't really say A, B, C, you say, you know, ab, k, the, like that. And so she taught us how to do the alphabet based on sounds. But Marva Collins takes that to an even um, more in-depth level. Not only does she teach her children how to do the sounds, like I said, I learned in college, but also all the ways of making that sound. So for example, the A sound, the long A sound, literally the sound A, um, she taught them how it looked with just an A, an A, a consonant and an E. See, a lot of us, we say that that is magic E, but she didn't teach them magic E. In fact, those weren't a thing um, in her curriculum. She taught them that you'll have a vowel blank and then an E. And when you see A blank E, you'll know that that makes the A sound. Um, also, that makes the A sound is A-I and then a blank. See, we teach that as a vowel team, but she taught them that that was the sound A. That was a long A sound and also blank A-Y at the end. And so she taught children how you look to learn the long A sound. The long A sound, the same sound, it looks like this. And there were different ways that the long A looked. It was brought blown away. And I'm like, I've never seen it like this. And I'm really big on phonics. And so to see it like this, because I've always learned like the phonics rules and you know how um, we are now. And so like with the phonics rules, technically you wouldn't teach A blank E would be magic E and AI would be a vowel team. A -Y. Like I learned that. So to see how she taught them like, hey, I'm teaching you the sound, the long A sound. The long A sound looks like this. And these are all the ways that would make that sound. Love it, genius. And it takes out all of the extraness out of it. Um, and it's really explicit. Um, and she also teaches spelling patterns to her children. And then her phonics program was really big on spelling because like I said earlier, that she believed if you could spell a word, then you could write the word. That if she can get you from sounding the word out and um, knowing the phonics of it, then once you knew how to spell the word, then you also knew how to write the word. Because all you had to learn was how to write 26 letters. If you knew how to write 26 letters, then you could write any and every spelling word. And that's why her um, her children were so successful when it came to spelling. In fact, her children became, grew up to be phenomenal spellers simply because they learned the basics. And um, so it was eye-opening seeing the correlation between the the spelling and the writing in fact she was I loved it I love the philosophy I was like genius I don't need to teach you how to write words I don't I don't need a spelling test there is no spelling test if you know how to um sound out this word then I know you know how to write the word if I can just get you to spell the word then I know that you can write the word y'all y'all don't y'all it's genius. So now I ask, so what? Is her approach outdated? Is this 
phonics approach outdated, especially as so many of us teach in African American or diverse communities, whether we have ESOL children or whatever, um, is this approach outdated to phonics? Let me know down in the chat box your, 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 your input. Do you think that this approach to teaching phonics um, and teaching children how to read, is it outdated? Is it outdated to explicitly teach all the sounds of the, of the long A and then get children to identify key vowels and words and then put those words um, with consonants and say the words. So y'all can give me a thumbs up if you say, um, yes, it's outdated, let's kick it to the curb or a thumbs down like, no, this is not outdated. We still need this. Let me know your opinions down below. Um, I wanna read you another one of her quotes. It was, trust yourself, think for yourself, act yourself, speak for yourself, be yourself, imitation is suicide. Like I stated, she was really big on building children up with who they are. So she taught, and I love her, her way of teaching, teaches children to be themselves, to truly become who they are meant to be um, and think for themselves, be leaders, not followers. So I definitely wanted that quote and wanted to see what y'all's opinion are. Is this approach to teaching Teaching phonics outdated. I know that there has been a huge, huge, huge rift in education. And we have talked about this on this channel time and time again between the science of reading versus balanced literacy. And if you don't know what the two are, let me explain that why you are dropping down your comments below. Um, the science of reading is a um, is 30 years of research. It is a scientific slash phonics approach to reading. And it's all built on explicitly teaching children um, sound patterns and rules in order for them to learn how to read. Um, it is a new wave in education where many schools are going from balanced literacy to the science of reading. Balanced literacy is a approach to reading that has been around for at least 20 years, maybe longer than that, maybe 30 years. Um, really since the beginning of like sight words and learning through play and all of that. But balanced literacy is an approach to reading that basically states that you do, um, that children master how to read by creating a love for reading through doing daily reading tasks. So every day you're exposed to good literature and then a child develops a love for literature simply based on learning what good readers do. And when you learn what good readers do, then you will um, begin to establish a love for learning and a love for reading. And then that correlates between reading and writing. And there's a an entire workshop. There's two workshops within Balanced Literacy. You have a reading workshop and a writing workshop that pretty much mirror each other. Um, and so a lot of schools now have been doing balanced literacy approach for 20 some years. And they're realizing that a lot of these children just do not know how to read because the explicit lessons have been taken away from the classroom. So now they are going to a science of reading approach. And so and thinking about and learning about Marvel Collins way of teaching makes you go back to that thought and mindset of, is her approach really actually outdated? You said, no, um, you you might be biased though. Okay, you said, but you don't think it's outdated. Why? Because I'm about to explain. I said the same thing. I said, absolutely not. I feel if anything, it may have been outdated the last you know, 15 years, yes, it was outdated because that wasn't a thing, but we have come right back around. Who who in here has always heard what um go like the everything comes back around? Everything comes back around. All all this thing, all life is nothing but getting rid of the old, getting back to the new, and then you realize, hey, that old thing was actually working better than this new thing. We're going back to it. Even fashion always comes back around. Everything in education comes back around. And I feel like we have come back around to the point where her approach is actually in the forefront of education. In fact, her approach would fit into the science of reading um, 
of, of, of classification, she did explicit phonics based instructions in order to teach um, children how to read. In fact, she literally does just that. And so absolutely not. My opinion is her approach is not <laughs> outdated. He said, nothing is new under the sun. Absolutely. Like her approach, if anything, is more prevalent now than ever before because it's able to now touch so many more people. Be, think about it. Back in the 70s, you did not have social media the way it was. There was um, not a lot of people had heard about her. I mean, I know you said you heard about her, you know, growing up, but I had not. And I've been in education my whole life. And so now we um, I feel like if anything, her approach can now go five times farther because of the use of technology. More and more people can, um, at least on this channel, hopefully I can spread in the news, um, but more and more people can adapt her approach to teaching reading. So actually, if anything, her approach is now hot press, hotter than ever, um, because we are back around to the science of reading. In fact, I never forget last year, when uh, my administrator, we were all in a meeting and basically they told us we were moving from balanced literacy to the science of reading. And, you know, it's this new big thing, this new push. We're getting rid of Lucy Calkins, out with the old, in with the new. Um, and we were in that meeting and I never forget my principal literally goes. So we're going back to the old way of teaching. We're going back to the same way that our teachers taught us. OK, and that's really what it is. And we look at her teaching, you see the videos and you may think, well, that's the old way of teaching. Teaching, but that's what we're going back to. We realize that the reason that children don't know how to read now is because we stopped teaching them. We just magically thought that they would just learn how to read. And now we're going back to that approach. Um, and this is one of her other quotes. It says, education is the thing. This black, white bit, I don't deal with people that way. I deal with it as if you're another individual. If you do something that... Um, perturbs me or aggravates, perturbs me or aggravates me. I do not think you're done. You've done it because I'm black. And so she takes the, the, the racial, you know, the division out of, out of this. And what I liked about this was thinking about if it's outdated. Um, well, I had to bring it up because if we look at the times where her school was, that was back in the seventies and you see the videos of the students she taught there, she had some, some other, and ethnicities in there, but there were primarily um, black and brown students. And she did not see life like that. She saw people as individuals the same way I know for me, I see people. I don't see people of their color. I see them as who they are. Um, but I think this is important to mention as we talk about being outdated, that her her strategies, her beliefs had nothing to do with 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 that, like of color, but it just had to do with the person. Now she said that, um, you know, if you, you know, the second part, whatever, but the first part of talking about, you know, having, um, being looked at as an individual, I felt like was very powerful and very prevalent. So I definitely have um, some big news coming out that I wanted to share with you. And you can still drop down, um, you know, your thoughts as far as Marvel Collins, but definitely have some big news beyond the fact that we voted and our Saturdays are now called Chatted Up Saturdays. I'll leave the, the, um, the, 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 the poll up for another week and then after that we'll finalize the name but chatted up saturday was actually bonnie um her input that she put in so definitely still go vote if you haven't voted it's in the community post right now the chatted up saturday is winning so if you like that title go vote for it so it can stay in the lead um but i have some big big news coming for you guys so um i don't want to give it all to you right now but i do want to help um help you with this whole thing called teaching reading teaching we have kicked off a new year whether you're about to start in two weeks for labor day or one week really you only got one more week, I'm sorry. Or if you've already been teaching one month, my goal is to help you prevent 
feeling burned out this school year. I'm claiming it that this year will be your best year in education. So I want you to imagine having a bank of lessons that encourage optimal engagement for children, um, having a plan lesson planning system that saves hours of planning, schedules, routines, transitions that allow you to just be stress-free. We just, Life is so short. It's so short. It's so short. It's so short. You should not be spending your weekends on lesson plannings and figuring out you know, what you're going to teach, but have a, I want to help you to have a system in place that you can do this really on autopilot. Um, imagine having simplicity and clarity, having a plan laid out of what to teach, when to teach, and how to teach. Imagine having effective reading professional development if you were lost when I was talking about syllable division and phonics and reading and reading comprehension, imagine knowing how all of that at your fingertips and um, having a coach be able to coach you through that and imagine having high reading of growth in your students, just like Marva Collin. She was able to teach um, hundreds and hundreds of children how to read simply because she knew she had the skills and she had systems in place to get them to achieve greatness. Well, I want to invite you to my workshop, The Three Secrets to Teaching Reading with Ease, helping you avoid the burnout by not only equipping you with the systems and things that you need in place, but also to give you what you need in order for your children to succeed. Um, in this workshop, you'll learn what everyone gets wrong about teaching reading and what you should do instead. You'll learn the game-changing mind shift that will help your reading instruction run on autopilot. You'll also learn how to reimagine what's possible with your new for, found time, with all this new time, so that um, you have a system that's fun and simple that runs in the back on autopilot. And imagine having one simple step that you can immediately implement to not only achieve high growth, but also to help you do that while working less. less. So the link to that is also in the chat box. Don't miss it. I cannot wait to... Um, Welcome you guys into the workshop. This is my first time speaking about it. Woo! We're three weeks away, so I'm excited. So I want y'all to claim it that this year will be the best year yet. And also, I have some more exciting new drum roll, but you have to come to the workshop to find out. <laughs> You have to come to the workshop to find out. So that workshop is coming up September 19th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time so that you guys can make it no matter if you're on the East Coast, West Coast. Um, I did it at that time so everybody, um, you know, can make it. And so in that workshop, you'll be given big news. And then the week prior to that workshop, it's important for me to let you know, um, September 12th through the 16th, I will be live here on YouTube every single day, giving you um, pretty much like a five-day challenge all about how to prepare for reading success. So it'll be five live free trainings. I have freebies, goodies for you every single day, 7 p.m., September 12th through the 16th. Um, so definitely make sure you are here for the free five-day challenge to get your school year off to a good start. And then make sure you attend the wonderful workshop, hear some more exciting news, and allow me to just really help make sure that this school year is your best school year yet. We are claiming it. We are living in excellent this year. Um, and if you are in need of working even further. We're wanting to work smarter, not harder, really implementing all of these reading strategies and systems in your classroom. Definitely reach out to me. I do do professional development with schools. There's my email and um, there's also the website. It's on my website as well, but um, there's a website directly. And so definitely I cannot wait to work with you, spread the word. Word of mouth is one of the most powerful tools there is. Let me look in the chat box. She said, you were fortunate to have most mostly teachers that look like you in the 80s in St. Louis and that were that were not. Um, they were great teachers as well. Oh, that's, um, that's, that's beautiful. You said a few that were not. Let me go back. Let me slow down. Let me go back and reread this. <laughs> You were fortunate to have most teachers that actually look like you in the 80s in St. Louis. And then you also had a few teachers that were not good, um, but they were great teachers as well. So you were very blessed. That is such a blessing to have a whole series of good teachers. I know there's so many people out there that don't have that 
um, blessing or they had years where they didn't have a teacher at all. They had subs the whole year. Um, you still remember your phonics workbook. Yes. So you you learned based on phonics. See, I did not. I did not. Um, and I know I share my story and I'll share my story in the workshop. And there's only sometimes I really share my whole story, but I did not learn based on phonics. I did not learn based on phonemic awareness. I learned based on memorization. And let me tell you, it didn't work. <laughs> it did not work. In fact, I was the guinea pig of it. Um, my first, my first grade classroom, I want to say it was first grade. Um, that was their first year wanting to do sight words. And so our class was chosen to be the guinea pigs. And there goes my entire future of learning how to read. But it also made me so passionate about teaching children how to read because I was that student that had to learn on my by myself. And it wasn't until I really started teaching children how to read that I really learned how to read. Um, and I never forget that moment. I was teaching children how to read using this basal program. Um, it was called Reading Masters. And those kids were getting it. And I'm, I'm learning. I'm like, what is a magic E? Like, what does that mean? And my brother, because I struggled reading as a as a young child, my mother made my brother do Hooked on Phonics. Um, he was like three and four learning Hooked on Phonics and baby boy could read because he learned phonics um, at such a young age. So I'm glad that you, you, you see, you, you, were, you were raised right. <laughs> you said from second grade, those teachers taught back then and they cared. Yes, I, I don't wonder why we have grown so much away. I think it's really the politics. I think so, there's so much politics in education now that, that I feel like teachers do still care, but there's no room to just teach. There's so much online. In fact, if you, um, I know here in the state of Georgia, hello, I, I would love to talk about this one one of these days. They're changing up the curriculum. They're taking Martin Luther King out. They're taking slavery out. They're taking the Jim Crow laws out. Um, they're adding more to George Washington here. They're completely changing the social studies curriculum. And I've been told that that's happening in multiple states. Um, and so you can't teach what you want to teach. And did y'all hear that was recently, was it in Texas? There was just a teacher a teacher strike, like literally this week, because they told them what they can and cannot teach about anymore. And if te teachers had to literally sign a waiver stating that they would not talk about certain things. And if you talked about certain things, then there was your job. And so I feel like teachers aren't able to teach um, the way that we really want to because of the, um, that was in Texas too. Okay. And also in Texas too, they're changing up the curriculum. So, I But I want to say the strike was in Texas. I don't know which part, but so it was Texas and um, the teachers started, uh, st did a strike because, because of it. Um, but yeah, they are changing up education. So it's like, we can't teach what we want to teach. So I think that, that that's, what's missing. It's going back to where teachers have the freedom to teach. Like you said, they, they taught, they had the ability to just teach. There wasn't the, the pressure of the high stakes testing. I know we just talked about that. There wasn't so much pressure coming from, you know, federal level. Think about it. We talked about this the other week, how, you know, on the federal level, you know, you have funding, you have, so there's, there's so much pressure that comes down to the teacher that you can't just teach. Why? Because if you just talk kids about what you want to teach, like what you want to talk about or what they needed, then, oh, now you're behind the scope and sequence. And now your kids won't pass the standardized test. And now you're going to get doctor, your pay get doctor the school will get doctor now the school's gonna be a failing school because you took 10 minutes out of your education to talk about marva collins and you know like we're not able to just teach and so i feel like that has um um consequently reflected in how teachers are able to care so like you're saying and you you felt that your teachers cared more when we were younger but it's like we're not able to do those things you you're not even able to bring food i mean in a lot of schools you can't bring food back then you could you could make a homemade pie and bring it to your kids like you could treat your kids in school like you would treat your own there's a new skit the what's the school was that missouri somebody just said they were from missouri who was it from missouri Oh, you're from you're from Missouri. What maybe it wasn't Missouri, but I want to say Missouri or Missouri or Mississippi. They're bringing back corporal punishment. That just dropped in the news this week too. That that just passed. That they're bringing back paddling in schools, and so a lot of people are like, 
um, going back fighting that. And now that I think about like how we've talked about the Marvel Collins approach to teaching phonics, how that was a thing of the past and that was coming back. Um, and paddling was a thing of the past and corporate punishment was a thing of the past, but now it's coming back. It makes me really look like everything. It's like we are almost going, we are going back and we are going back so fast. I mean, so fast. Um, if you think about all the laws that they're trying to place with women, Taking away, taking away the ability to have abortions, taking away the ability to have, um, you know, protection, the ability for birth control, like all that is now being taken away. It's like you see it in the media with adults, but now it's making me think like, I'm, I know I'm a very analytical person, but it's making me think what's happening in education going back to the old is the same thing that's also helping happening in the government. We're all like going back to the old way of doing things. Um, and so it's very interesting to see the parallels between the, 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 the new laws in place, you know, as far as with women and also what's happening in education. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about as far as in education, then definitely watch this video next where I talk about science of reading versus balanced literacy, because it will show you how we are going from the um, the, the modern way of teaching and reading and balanced literacy, but we're going way back to the old way, the science of reading, the Marva Collins way of teaching phonics with reading, teaching children how to read based on explicitly teaching phonics rules to them. Um, so we're all, we, we're back. We're, we're, we're back to the old now, y'all. <laughs> We're, we're back to the old. So definitely let me know what phonics programs are y'all where y'all doing at your school. Do you feel like Marva Collins is outdated? I know um, if you're watching the replay, definitely um, drop that down. He said, I rock, Kaja. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. I love that you guys have provided this um, as a space. And like I said, if y'all keep getting on on Saturdays, we'll keep rocking it. We have a name, Chat It Up Saturdays. Definitely go vote on the name. Um, y'all let me know what topics y'all want to go on from here. Would y'all like to do more people? I really, really enjoyed this. So thank you so much for recommending uh, Marva Collins. And I know when y'all dropped her name, it was just like, like she's a great person and look i feel like she has touched me so much um i i i love i love i love stuff like this so i definitely have felt very inspired by her story so i thank you for you know educating me this is what a community is all about let's let's make each other better <laughs> i'm here to help you manage effective reading instruction but I'll, but i also like to learn too i feel like as educators we are definitely lifelong lifelong learners so let me know what topics i want to talk about next we can talk about the all the things that are going on in the media we can literally i would love like y'all let me know to explore that topic like is education i think we should talk about that next week is education going back like are we going backwards? Are we going backwards? Like, let's, let's really um, discover that. So definitely join me next Saturday as we talk about that. Is education going backwards? Um, I feel like it'd be a great, a great topic. So let me bring all your thoughts, bring all your thoughts, bring all your thoughts next Saturday, bring your articles. Um, definitely send me things. I love how you guys send me stuff like in the middle of the week um, relating to the topics. And I love to hearing you all's input. I've noticed that on these people are like really, even everybody watching the replay, place um they're really putting their a lot of their thoughts and feelings in it and so i definitely love that this has now become a space where teachers have a voice i feel like we have um our voice has been stripped away um from so long and so um this has literally become a place where we have a voice so i appreciate y'all for showing up and 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 giving your input your input matters your input matters um so definitely see you guys next saturday and if you have not signed up for the workshop how to teach reading with ease, where I will break down um, how you can avoid the burnout in literacy by creating very effective reading systems in your classroom or your homeschool environment. So definitely save your spot by clicking the link below. And not only, not only will you um, get some great tips of what to implement, but like I stated the week before, I'm going live the entire week, giving you pretty much like a rollout to preparing your classroom for reading for the school year. Because um, I 
I'm ready for this year to be the best year you have had thus far when it comes to teaching reading. Good morning, good morning, good morning. You're able to join live. Woo -woo. Uh, I know. <laughs> so we, we're glad that you're here. But um, definitely check out the workshop. Join us. Join us. And if you've come, if you've done it before, join it with us again every time I add more to it as, you know, education is always changing and updating. I'm changing and updating with it. So definitely, I cannot wait to invite you and welcome you into the workshop. Um, and y'all let me know if there's some um, some more topics. I think next Saturday, we could talk about is education going backwards because everything ties, everything ties so, so, so well with this. Um, say good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, we have a beautiful day. Um, and this week, um, we have some new videos dropping out. I also have some shorts. I want to start giving you guys some more shorts and definitely um, keep me in your prayers. I do have a biopsy coming up on Tuesday. And for those of you guys that don't know, I do have a ministry. We meet every morning live at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. Um, it is Anointed Living Ministry. So if you want to join us in prayer, definitely come join us. I, you can see me there every single weekday morning. I am there at 7.30. We share a quick word from God and then join together in prayer. So just wanted to share that. If you did not know, that is anointed. I'm going to just drop it in there if it interests you. There we go. You could just type it in the chat box. And I cannot wait to see you guys over there as well. So have a wonderful day. If you have not seen the Balance Literacy versus Science of Reading, definitely check that video out so that you understand what is going on. And then you'll understand how, why I said what I said, that the Marva Collins way is not outdated. If anything, it is coming right back around. It is more prevalent and updated now than ever before because it seems like we are right back to the old way of explicitly teaching phonics. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate y'all. And I will see you next Saturday on Chat It Up Saturday.